We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am your host, Kim Warner. This is Kim's Universe. And I have Jasmine Tony with me today and Ashley Townsend Daniels. Ladies, where are you? Hey, let's get this party started. Okay, so Jasmine, can you tell the audience um, about your uh, business? Of course. I am Jasmine, and I am the creator of The Nomadic Goddess. It started off as a travel blog, and then I realized that with me being a flight attendant and with me traveling, it also opened up me to different uh, spiritual experiences. So then I recreated it, revamped it, added a little pizzazz to it, and now we have the, the Nomadic Goddess, which is like an all-in-one blog site. And you also said, um, or you told me that you added... And I've been on there. Let me just say that um, food that you've experienced. Yes, yes, yes. Because we all have, we all are foodies, and I love eating food. So, like different places, especially like Italy, Italy, the pasta. Oh my gosh! Um, so I, I added a section, a blog section, just for all the places that I love to go, especially in like San Diego or um, Germany. I went to the German. I spent Christmas in Germany, and we went to the German Christmas markets. It had glue wine, which is so good. Um, but yes, I added a section for the foodies. Okay, so they can go to your blog and you, I think you'll give that information and we'll have it um, so people can go and look at what you're doing. Ashley. How are you today? Welcome back. I'm back with Miss Kim on her universe. Um, I am the CEO of Business Grace. I am a coaching and consulting firm for startup businesses and new entrepreneurs. My goal is to help you create a strong foundation so that you can take off and be extremely successful. All right. So um, everyone's information will be in um, available to you guys so you can look at what they're doing and even add. Some of you might even want to send us some information on your, your businesses and become a part of the show at one point. So today we're going to be looking at the sacral chakra and or the solar plexus, excuse me. We have been going over the sacral chakra for about three or four weeks, um, adding information concerning what a negative or imbalanced sacral chakra will do. And that is part of the temple uh, that um, Jesus was speaking of. You can read about it in Revelations 20. One in 2021, 20, I think. Um, it, hold on. This real TV. Uh, yeah, Revelations 20 and 21, the scriptures. So uh, moving on from there, uh, we're going to start introducing information on the solar plexus. The solar plexus, it refers to the third chakra right around the belly button. Um, it spins in the area around the abdomen above the belly, but up to the breastbone. So that's going to be right around just beneath um, the breast, right? So the solar plexus is responsible for your sense of self, um, the ego. And I can say that then we need to know that there is a healthy ego, but the healthy ego doesn't come forth until after we have discipline the unhealthy ego so we have two variations here and some of us don't know about this um that ego also tells you about your self-identification so uh it, it it goes into uh understanding the balance of a solar chakra it provides a sense of um, personal power which means that you don't have to depower others um, you have your own confidence. You don't thrive off of others and what they're saying to you about you. You know you for yourself. So you're confident as you are going on to do what you do as a mother, a father, as a business owner and so on. Um, 
It also provides you with the strength to overcome obstacles. A lot of people get stuck here in this area of life and they don't know how to get out of it. And usually there is a lack of confidence in the area and you got to stop and stay there for a minute until you have cleared the lack of confidence. So in the confidence area, I want to kind of bring Jasmine in because the sacral chakra, which has been the last couple of weeks, was dealing with um, the imbalance of the, the womb area. And, and men and women both have that. And in the womb area, there can be a, a overactivity. It could be from um, deposits of discouragement. It could be from deposits of um, victimization that we don't know about. It could become, as I spoke or we spoke, some of the young ladies with, were with me formally, um, deposits of molestation, um, rape, and um, um, incest. So as we take this agenda forward, because I always say I like to talk about things that people don't like to talk about, because if you don't like to talk about it, it's going to stay in the closet generation after generation. And we'll always have mental health issues with our people. And that's my feel. So um, Jasmine, in the area of confidence, um, tell us about your story. Yes. The in lack the of confidence of into the, con mm -hmm. the you know, fulfilling confidence. Okay. Yes. So I am very, very familiar with the topic of uh, molestation and incest because at the age of five, I was molested twice by a family member. Um, what happens when you, when that, what happened, well, for me, I, because the um, person who assaulted me said that it was my fault and that I asked for it. <clears throat> so at the age of five, at the ripe age of five, you don't understand, like, you know, you kind of have an idea of right and wrong, but when an adult says that you did something, you take that, like, it, it's ingrained in your memory. So for me, it was, I wanted this, and why, why would I want this? Like, why would I ask for this? And why did I deserve this? I must have done something to make him believe that I wanted this. So as I grew up, and as I kept the secret, um, I grew up hating myself. And my teenage years were, were the roughest years because that's when I, that's when the hatred was like a, the hatred, the cup of hatred was like overflowing. And that's when I also began to self-harm. It wasn't until I started working with you, Ms. Kim, that I realized that it wasn't my fault and that um, I didn't ask for it and that in a way that he put his trauma on me because it happened to him, which we later found out. And I confronted him and you helping me unbox that. And then last year and like the year before, and even this year, me doing inner child healing and getting reintroduced to my inner child, which is a catalyst to rebuilding your self-confidence. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't realize is that your confidence like the confidence that you had as a child and as a teenager, that's it. That, that's who you are. So doing that and, and experiencing that and like being who I wanted to be, being myself and not being what other people thought, um, thought of me. Like I dyed my hair blue. I dyed my hair purple and pink and I'm finally a blonde. And I'm like, it's all because it's what I wanted to do as a child. <laughs> it's all that it's all that it's everything that I wanted to do as a child and it's just been amazing that, that having this like re this love for myself this unconditional love for myself where it's just like I at 16 I couldn't see this for myself like I didn't even like looking in the mirror and now I'm like I'm looking at my in the mirror and I'm like I love my eyes <laughs> getting ready for work I'm like I love my eyes I'm like oh I did my makeup good today I look good today I look good without makeup too but it's just like, it's like a whole new, it's like stepping into a whole new you. And I love that for me. Wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for speaking up for the work that I do. Um, Ashley, what can you add to that? You have a daughter. Yes. So that was a new experience, becoming a mom. I was 24 years old. So 
I was still figuring me out. And then, and I had been a dancer. So top physical condition, amazing. I danced anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a week. So now I have a new mom body and that was confidence rocking, but that's not something that I wanted to implant on my daughter at all. So I would tell her, you're so beautiful. You're so smart. You're so amazing. Like I always wanted to instill in her that level of confidence. And unfortunately life happens. And there were some things that transpired between my husband and I that did rock her confidence. And I noticed it. And I said, I want to get you some affirmations. So when I revamped our bedroom, um, she has a section and it has her affirmations that I said, I want you to wake up every morning after you brush your teeth and wash your face and get everything. Before you get dressed, I want you to say these affirmations. They are, I am strong, I am smart, I am beautiful, I am loved, and I am brilliant. She forgets some mornings because sometimes we're in a rush and <laughs> I'm trying to get her out the door to get to school. But I wanted to implement that into her because my parents instilled that confidence in me when I was little. They told me all the time, oh, you're so smart. You're doing such a good job in school. We're so proud of you. I will come in with A's and B's, always high honor roll. And that created a level of a standard for myself where I have the capability to do this. So there's no reason why I don't. And now looking at her, she's in a third grade with a fourth grade reading level getting extra projects on the side because she completes her work and has such an understanding that it's it's phenomenal. And I'll be with her and her parent, her teachers will be bragging about her. And I'll look at her and I go, wow, you're so smart. I'm so proud of you. And she lights up. And that's something that is so important, not just for our little girls, but for all, little, all children. They need that because if they get that when they're little, when they get older and society is trying to program them and tell them these things. They're like, no, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I am smart. I am these things. I learned these things about myself when I was little and I could recognize them. And then they can continue that because having confidence, even if you're wrong and you have all the confidence in the world, it's very difficult to tell you that you're wrong. It's about being wrong and strong, but we don't want to always be, be wrong and strong. But if you're confident in what you're doing, then it's very difficult to discourage you. And that's the most important thing. You don't want to be discouraged in anything that you do. So that's something very important for me as a mother, raising a beautiful little girl, for her to know that. So a healthy solar plexus has to do with the planting of seeds. Because when you come here, and I see two young ladies here that had um, different experiences growing up. Uh, Ashley said that her parents did this and um, Jazz has said that this is what happened to her um, at five. Before you're 13, anything that happens to you traumatic imp impacts your psyche. We cannot tell our children it's going to be okay or just forget it or let it go. It's a practice of letting go. So in the area of self-confidence where we have people that are experiencing the planting of seeds of doubt, hatred, anger, and even into our topic to help people come out and speak about molestation and rape, uh, even abuse. What we have is the need to uproot uh, deep roots, like trees out there, oak tree roots that have been sitting and growing through generations because trees, they have branches, but there's um, one, um, the bark or the, 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 the part of the tree that holds everything together. And that tree that is a part of a past traumatic situation or situations that engulf generations has to be cut down. All of this is biblical. Now, going into that to rebuild it, you could go to Psalms 1, like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. I shall not be moved. What shall I do? Nourish, nourish myself off of the water and continue to rebuild, right? So moving on from there, this is what I see um, in Jasmine. And the confidence 
I hear, you know, the spirit saying, now this is the confidence that I have in Christ. No, no longer do I keep the confidence of my past endeavors. See, there was a confidence in that situation that kept her quiet. It kept many people quiet. But now when you see a support and people coming together talking about how do we keep our children safe? How do we um, help others unveil something that they've been embarrassed by? What happens is, is that others speaking about it, others begin to say, it happened to me too. You know, it, it's not just that we want you to say it happened. We want you to also admit because that's when God can heal. When you admit it, you begin to lock, unlock all of this impact energy that's been oppressed within you. And you begin to actually cry. Yes, you can feel the pain again, but you begin to live and laugh. No longer can the thief steal and kill your life. All right. You guys want to add more? Yeah, it, um, it honestly is like a root because it wasn't until I confronted my cousin that I, um, his sister told me that it was an issue with the men in our family. And it was also an issue with the, um, the matriarchs of the family sweeping it under the rug. And I honestly think that it's a really, really, it's, it's like a one too many tale, especially within the black community of you know, the, the, the matriarch sweeping the sins of the patriarch under the rug and pushing them in the closets um, because <clears throat> I've had conversations with my with cousins and they've said oh yeah um, I told her I told I told me I told my grandmother and like she didn't believe me and I'm like it's like it's a, it's honestly a generational curse it's a generational cycle and I was and honestly when I started healing from it I said if this is the Hill that I have to die on, I will. Like this, if, if, if I have to be a martyr for something, this is it. This, this is what I will be a martyr for because it ends with me. Um, I, I want to add to um, what you're saying. That's wonderful that you found confidence to continue to push and just make a stand. You know, when we talk about matriarchs and the generations, we don't want anyone out there to feel that we're coming against family members. It may not have been through your family that it happened. It could have been in another position, maybe a babysitter. It could have been someone that, yeah, you know, your parents were working for. But the point is, is that we want to unveil the issue and give people the confidence and even um, the foundation, which is spiritual, to stand on what they can believe about themselves and not believe about the perpetrator and what the perpetrator said. Because I've said in other um, broadcasts that in, in most cases, this has happened to the person that did it to you, right? And it continues to um, be a pattern until you break that pattern of silence of behaviors because a lot of times here, um, the person that's been touched has no confidence to do anything different. They do the same things. Uh, they look at their cells, like Jasmine said, having body image issues. Uh, they have uh, memory issues. They, they can't sleep at night because the pictures of those things are continuously happening. So where is it right when you, something such as that is tormenting you, right? Ashley, you want to add? There's no I writing. wanted to add, um, I wanted to add about the confidence. When you finally get your voice to speak, it changes. Um, Jasmine is my cousin. So when she finally confronted the person I was present and everything about her changed. It was almost like a weight. I watched a weight come off of her shoulders and she stands taller. She she speaks more confidently. She is able to be the person that I probably always knew was in there, but couldn't see. And you know, so many times people speak about how, oh, I spoke up because I saw this person do it, or I heard this person do it, and that gave me strength. So you never know with your own personal confidence what you speaking out and what your story is doing and how that transforms somebody. Because sitting in that room. Um, 
the person she confronted then confided that it happened to him. And I think that was the first time wow. he ever mentioned yes. it. And, Beautiful. and that even, I've seen him since then and um, he walks differently. It's almost like that freed him too. So you never know what your confidence in a situation can do for somebody else. And when they see that, I, I mean, even speaking from personal experience, understanding the journey that my mother and father have gone through in abuse because there has been abuse with addictions and um, even some physical abuse. Looking at my mother's confidence when she's a when she's been able to like let it go and finally let it go. And it, it probably wasn't something that I would have noticed years ago because I wasn't privy to. I've come privy to it in the last couple of years. She stands differently. Mm. She was working out. She's been eating differently. Um, she did suffer from severe alcoholism and she's been breaking that cycle from herself. So looking at that, um, it gives me a confidence in her as being my mother and understanding that there's any time in your life when you can break that. There's it's no expiration date. There's no time for someone to tell you. So seeing that confidence in her inspires me as her daughter and then inspires me also as a mother to do the same thing for my daughter. So it's, it's honestly phenomenal. I don't want to cry because I didn't even know that was something I was going to share today, honestly. Um, but, but it's awesome. See, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. It's to see that type of transformation in somebody and to know that her also watching my own transformation and the breaking of breaking down of my relationship with my husband and getting the help through Ms. Kim and our leadership group and the moon therapy classes that we do, all of those things, my mother listens, whether she realizes it or not, and she's getting information and what that's doing for her and her foundations, because now she's into crystals. She'll say, Ashley, I've been looking at a blue crystal. Which one is this? And I say, mama, I don't know, but if you want me to buy it, I'll get it and we'll cleanse it and bless it. And she's... A, my mother could never grow plants and she has a plant in her room and it's thriving. That is all due to her confidence changing and creating a strong spiritual foundation within herself. And it's beautiful. I, it's just absolutely gorgeous to watch. So the, the, um, I want to go back to, um, all of this is so beautiful, you know, um, to watch and see the transformation, which is so biblical to our lives. Transformation is in John and two, but it also John two, um, where Jesus is turning water into wine. That's a transformation process. It's not just about the wine, but we become the wine. That's why, you know, it says you can't put old wine in a new wine bottle. You can't because there's a new process for new wine and only a new bottle can fit new wine, okay? So I want to go back and correct myself. Revelations 21 and 20, um, gonna keep going. Y'all just bear there um, because with the, the chakra system, um, the healing that takes place is necessary in the body is the, the, the part of scriptures that Jesus was saying that I am the temple. And if you tear it down in three days, I'll rebuild it. So uh, how would you rebuild it? Because the descendant aspect of him going to the cross and coming back up was tear me down and I re rebuild stronger. So anyone that goes through these scenarios or other situations, what we have is the word telling us that someone we've been following or a spirit that we've been following, such as Jesus, uh, Christ, the Christ, is saying that if you tear it down, I'm gonna rebuild it and I'm gonna keep fortifying, I'm gonna keep strengthening. That means that you can uh, set out to do harm to me and try to break my will, which is in God. But what I'm gonna do is continue to rebuild according to the word of God. Now this is the confidence. The solar, solar plexus um, is saying to pay attention to that part of your body. Um, Ashley, or, or uh, Jazz, look up a stone um, that is indicative to the solar plexus while I continue to talk because here we go. Um, God bless. So I wanna read the sixth foundation stone of New Jerusalem, 
there is New Jerusalem being built. And many people look at it as the external, the city, right, um, overseas. And what we have is the New Jerusalem within ourselves. If you had an old Jerusalem, then there was faulty ground there. You got to think big. You got to expand your thoughts and you got to follow Jesus within because it's an inner journey. He never journeyed anything outside of himself. Although he walked in places, he still had a mind to journey within himself to get there. So everything about him was saying, Father, lead me and guide me. You know, so lead me and guide me where? Here in Revelations, it said is, um, the, in half of this Bible, it says the stones, fifth sardonyx, sixth sardius, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth chrysophorus, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. A lot of people use amethyst um, for healing more than anything, right? A lot of people out there have been secretly using uh, crystals. You ain't got to secretly use it. It's right here in the Bible. Go and look it up. Then there is Exodus 28. And the reason we want to do this is, is because he used, they used in the Bible, these uh, stones to build the temple, but it wasn't an outside temple only. You can't build a sufficient temple within until you do, I mean, outside until you do within. So we're having to go back and redo the way that we think because our inner work is what brings outer success. Now, whatever success means to you is that, but I want to be successful in rebuilding who I am after I have been broken down by words that people gave me and I kept those words in myself and their actions. I want to rebuild me so that I can also touch these young women and men to help them to rebuild. What are we rebuilding? Our vocabulary, number one, because in the beginning, God created. It says over in Genesis that, and the word, you know, he in the beginning, he created and he began to speak. Let there be. Anything that you begin to attach, let there be. Let there be healing for uh, the world, truly. But let the world go back into spirituality and get their healing from the spirit because all of the world is indicative to all of us that live in the world. But when we begin to change the enunciation of who we are, I will say I am in this world, but not of it. Therefore, there is no thing that can happen to me that I won't speak about <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You touch me, I'm talking to my father in heaven first. Then I'm going to go talk to people because my father in heaven is more powerful than my father in this world. Now, I want to bring up something else. You can never forget the woman because she is the one that carried this Jesus, that seed. She was a foundation that birthed him. And I know we have. And also, um, we're going to be going on a cruise October the 21st, um, a bunch of us in the group and uh, friends and families, all of that. It's the big, uh, whatever you want to call it, networking. Some people might want to go out there and meet them, a girl or a guy, who knows? But it's, you know, wellness and back to um, treat, taking care of yourself. Um, we have the uh, posters or um, posts going up on Facebook and on um, Instagram. And so you'll see the information here as well.